first there was the Ark, and from it a new world was born. Darth Kermit here with my first video on the Western version of the Korean MMORPG Lost Ark. The point of this video is to quickly summarize everything a new Western player needs to know before jumping into Lost Ark. If you want more detailed info, there are already a ton of great videos out there and I'll link to my favorites in the description. But if you don't have a ton of time and just want the highlights, I think this video will do it for you. But before I get into it, I plan on making a lot more Lost Ark content in the future, so if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and support me on Patreon. Also, I'll be streaming the game on Twitch starting on February 8th, assuming everything goes well for the game's Head Start launch. Link in the description to my Twitch channel. Okay, let's start with the basics. Lost Ark is a Korean action MMORPG that is releasing for Western audiences on February 11th with a three-day head start starting on February 8th. If you want to know more about what a Korean action MMORPG means, check out some of the linked videos. But for this video, I'm going to move on to probably the most important topic, the classes. At release, there will be 15 classes in the Western version. Currently, there are 22 classes for the Korean version, so you can expect a steady stream of new classes after launch. There is no best class. Classes are regularly rebalanced, and the community consensus is that it's much better to pick your class based on what you enjoy playing, rather than chasing any meta. There's also no Holy Trinity in Lost Ark. There's only support and DPS. The standard party structure for endgame content is one support for every three DPS, but there are only two support classes, so if you enjoy the support playstyle and you want to make sure you can queue for groups quickly, then consider making your main character a bard or a paladin. Speaking of mains, this game is very much structured in a way that gives a lot of benefit to having multiple alternate characters. It's not absolutely necessary and many people enjoy the game just fine with only one character. But if you want to get the most out of this game, you should be prepared to have at least a couple alts. Just make sure you don't burn yourself out. One last thing to note is that some classes are currently gender locked, but theoretically Amazon and Smilegate are planning on changing this sometime in the future. Now for a bunch of leveling tips, which will be the main portion of this video. The first thing to know about the leveling process is that you must do quests to level up. Killing monsters provides extremely little XP. Also, finishing the main quest line provides very good rewards, apparently including a full set of tier 1 gear, which will set you up to participate in endgame content immediately. So don't skip the main quest line. On a similar note, this game is apparently very rewarding to completionists. While you may get to endgame a little later than other players, it is apparently quite worthwhile to complete all zones and secondary quests. Another major thing to know about leveling in Lost Ark is that there is an account-wide leveling system called Legacy that provides significant boosts to all of your characters. As for gear, don't bother min-maxing your gear while leveling. Save your time and resources to spend on gear once you hit level 60. Leveling in Lost Ark is fairly quick, with the current record being 10 hours to reach level cap. So any time or resources spent on gear as you level will pretty much just be a waste. Equip newer, better gear as you get it, and just leave it at that. One of the biggest recommendations from veteran players is to not waste consumables during the leveling process. Consumables are a huge part of the endgame, so save as many as possible. Now a quick note on Lost Ark's level design. Apparently the zones in this game are fairly linear. I've heard very little about this hurting the gameplay experience in any way, but I feel like it's something that a lot of people should know going in so that they aren't surprised by it. Join a guild. This game is best played in a guild. Come join the Discord channel if you want to join one of our guilds. And last but not least, don't sleep on your crafting slash harvesting skills called life skills in Lost Ark, or your stronghold. These are both important systems at end game. You don't have to put a ton of time into them while leveling, but don't completely ignore them. If you start seeing resources that you can't harvest, then you've fallen behind a little bit and you should take some time to catch up. On to end game. While the leveling experience is generally agreed to be quite good, Lost Ark, like many MMOs, is all about the endgame. Of particular note, the general consensus is that the endgame in Lost Ark is extremely casual friendly, while also providing plenty for hardcore players. There's a ton to do at endgame, so much so that it can be overwhelming to newer players, 
and the developer has recently committed to focusing on increasing the breadth of endgame activities even more. Once you make it to endgame, make sure you pay attention to your daily quests. There's a lot to do at endgame, and dailies are character-based, not account-based, so you can do dailies with each character. Even though dailies are character-based, many of the rewards for those dailies can benefit your other characters, so doing dailies for multiple characters can really boost your entire account. In particular, make sure you don't let your rest gauge sit at cap. The last thing I want to cover in this video are the Founders Packs. First and foremost, you do not need to buy a Founders Pack. This is a free-to-play game. That said, most everyone agrees that the Founders Packs do provide solid value, so here's a quick summary of recommendations. First, all packs come with the same 30-day period of premium game time called Crystalline Aura, which would normally cost $15 on its own. They also get you into the 3-day head start, so if you only care about the 3-day head start and or the Crystalline Aura, just get the $15 bronze pack. However, if you care about exclusive cosmetic items, there's a pet, a skin, a mount, and a structure, then get whichever pack has the ones you want or the amount of premium currency you want in order to buy cosmetics or boosts in the premium currency store. If you care about gameplay boosts and consumables, many of which are very useful in the end game, then grab the $100 Platinum Chest. The general consensus seems to be that the $100 Platinum Chest is much higher bang for your buck than silver or gold at $25 and $50 respectively. And one last note on the Founders Packs, they do stack, so if you want to buy one of each pack, you can. And that's it for now. I'll keep all the items in this video updated as a bulleted list on my Discord server along with other Lost Ark news, so drop by to stay up to date. Also stay tuned for more Lost Ark content, check out the stream on Twitch, and as always, if you like my videos, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and support me on Patreon. Till next time. I find your lack of rainbow connection disturbing. <laughs>